Greetings from Rhode Island, and thanks for inviting me to speak at the Ocean Sites meeting about using transport mooring arrays for biogeochemical studies. And I'd like to start by thanking everyone that I've been working with on what you're about to see. Um, it's part of GoSNAP, which is an NSF-funded international collaboration um, with Dasha Atamanchuk and Doug Wallace at Dalhousie University, Hilary Pilevsky from Boston College, and Rue Nicholson from Woods Hole. Um, without any of them, this would have fallen apart a long time ago, so I owe them so much gratitude, along with several others that I'll thank later on in the presentation. So um, I wanted to start with my main message, which, which is that transport mooring arrays can measure much more than mass, heat, and fresh water. And I think they really should when we can. Um, and so the mooring array that I'm going to talk about in particular is the OSNAP array, which has been doing a great job measuring those quantities um, across the subpolar North Atlantic, as schematized here, um, by deploying a number of moorings in the boundary currents, um, they've really captured the full overturning tr transport of mass heat and fresh water through this region. Our goal was to add gases to that picture and study the gases in the overturning and horizontal circulation of the subpolar North Atlantic. That's where we came up with GoSNAP, and I hope I can explain um, pretty succinctly why we've added that H. The motivation here was really um, readily apparent because the Labrador Sea is a key site of air-sea gas exchange. Um, at the top, I'm plotting here the oxygen percent saturation on the Labrador seawater density. And we know um, from plots like this and, and many other investigations that the Labrador seawater formation oxygenates a very large volume of ocean water that then um, provides oxygen far away from that formation region. Um, and another very well-known plot, originally by Sabine et al., shown at the bottom is the column inventory of anthropogenic carbon dioxide. We know that the Labrador Sea is the global maximum for that quantity. So with that in mind, we set ourselves some goals, goals which was to quantify the net export of oxygen from the Labrador Sea along with its seasonal and shorter term variability. Second, we wanted to calculate the air-sea exchange across the surface of the Labrador Sea boundary currents. Um, and that's possible if we can measure gas concentrations near the surface, or at least in the surface mix layer. Um, and finally, we wanted to measure PCO2 in key locations. First, to calculate the air-sea exchange, where those sensors would be in the, uh, in the mix layer, and then also use um, complementary observations to infer the export of carbon from the Labrador Sea, as, as well as its variability. So um, to do all this, we added gas sensors to the OSNAP West array in the Labrador Sea. Um, and so here is our initial deployment plan overlaid on a transect of oxygen concentration. And now just in the last several months, this plan has become a reality with only minor tweaks. We've put six PCO2 sensors um, and 42 oxygen optodes in the water. Um, and then a very happy addition was that Isabella Labrasse from Huey also added 25 oxygen optodes on the western flank of Cape Farewell. So um, this section shows the oxygen concentration and mooring design um, here in the Labrador Sea. So in the eastern Labrador Sea, where the um, after the Erminger current rounds Cape Farewell and comes in, uh, as denoted by B here, and then where those um, boundary currents, the Labrador current leaves the Labrador Sea, denoted by A here, here in the West. Um, I think uh, the 2020 deployments are what I call a COVID miracle. While so many cruises were disrupted or really canceled or postponed because of the pandemic, we got all the instruments in the water thanks to the heroic efforts of um, the science crew and other crew members on three different cruises. The um, U.S. sent out the Neil Armstrong, which deployed um, a number of moorings in the eastern Labrador Sea, including all of our, the sensors depicted here as black dots. Um, the Canadian crews uh, on the Amundsen, led by Dave Bear, did the same on the Newfoundland shelf. And Johannes Carstensen, just back from, the R on, from being aboard the RV Marion, who deployed a number of moorings, including these sensors, in um, the west and a few in the east as well. 
Um, so with our goal of measuring the transport of oxygen, we really need to um, pair those transport numbers that OSNAP measures um, with their ADCPs and, and their density surfaces with microcats um, and CTDs with the gas measurements from the oxygen optodes. Um, so here, Bob Picard made a section of the CTD section um, going along the moorings, and here's what you would get if you just interpolated um, the CTD oxygen at just the location of the optodes to make a section just from those measurements, and we capture all the key features. There is one more um, sensor that was deployed um, on the Marion that is in the Denmark Strait overflow water that I hope will capture that deep maximum in that layer um, when, when, when it's added. So the key concept um, of adding these sensors to the array, and particularly in the Labrador Sea, was um, that we had to communicate in proposing this and, and to understand it is that overturning transport is not the same as oxygen ventilation. I think this becomes an underappreciated point. While OSNAP has now well established that most of the buoyancy loss and heat loss happens um, east of Greenland, whether in the Iceland Basin or Urban or Sea um, and, or the Nor Nordic Seas, we found that oxygen um, is added mostly in the Labrador Sea. So um, we made some calculations just from a static section from the 2015 OSNAP cruise led by Penny Holiday, which collected um, ADCP velocities and as well as well calibrated oxygen concentrations. And from those quantities, we were able to get the circulation of um, oxygen through the um, both sides of the OSNAP array. Um, and what we found was though it's true that most of the heat and buoyancy loss happen in the east, most of the oxygen added, 65%, um, comes through the Labrador Sea and is exported from the Labrador Sea. And so with that as motivation, we really wanted to measure the um, what comes in and what goes out of the Labrador Sea with respect to its gases. Um, and so finally, I thought I would wrap up by addressing a couple of the questions that Ocean Sites posed to me um, that I thought I could weigh in on. Um, and so um, the first one especially spoke to me, which was how do you approach multidisciplinary observing programs and what are the biggest obstacles to overcome? But I just decided to cross that framework out and address this as opportunities to take advantage of. And really that, in our case, that's what happened. GoSnap only exists because OSNAP went first. Our instruments are in the water only because OSNAP moorings got priority to be turned around. Um, and the PIs, you know, all of the people I've listed and many others were ready and willing collaborators and they provided either births or expertise to get the calibration done or in some cases both um, to get all these in the water. So taking advantage of this existing infrastructure to measure something new was an incredible strategy for us. There are, of course, challenges and caveats. Um, gas sensor calibration requires special considerations uh, and procedures um, that are not trivial. And so it was really important to have that calibration correct. And it wasn't easy to um, surpass all of the expectations of both the physical oceanography community and the chemical oceanography community. It took us three tries to get this funded, but I'm really happy to say that each time we resubmitted, the proposal improved and this team that we put together is really exceptional for making sure everything works correctly. Um, and then one other challenge that we faced that we thought Ocean Science might be able to assist is that there, to our knowledge, is no best practices document for deploying uh, gas sensors in, on moored platforms you know, for extended periods of time. We've put together a lot of documentation as we went along, and we'd like to maybe put together a best practices document, um, you know, along all the collaborators together. Um, to that ocean sites might be able to disseminate or um, help with. So with that, I want to thank you again for having me and um, for listening and to have a great meeting.